Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Um, we go right into God's word, and as our custom is, we'll take our confession. Now, what I'm going to teach, if you genuinely listen and receive it, will transform you completely. It changed my own life. It changed my own life tremendously and completely. And it will do the same for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It's a three-part sermon. First service, second service, and then on Wednesday, we'll try to close it down. And I want you to open your heart to receive all that God has for you. You know, this year is a business year. Do you know that? God told me that. Say so he started on a Monday. It's a business year. And God is... God, uh, I've taught us the five dimensions of God here. And one of them is that God is a businessman. God the businessman. In Acts chapter 6, I think it's verse 3. The apostles told the church, seven men full of the Holy Spirit, full of faith, of honest report, that we may set over this business. That is talking of God's work. Calls it a business. Can we go to um, Acts chapter 6 from verse 3 to I think 3 or 4. Acts chapter 6 verse 3 or verse 4. So God's work, when God does something, God calls it a business. And every business must be profitable. In fact, the first cause that the Lord Jesus released was on the fig tree that was not productive. It was not doing business because the purpose of business is one, sustainability and two, fruit uh, profit making. It must be sustainable and it must make profit. The way it becomes sustainable is that he makes profit, not excessive profit. Because if you make excessive profit, you can destroy the business. So when the Lord Jesus came to the fig tree and there was no fruit, why? There was no fruit because inside that fruit will be seeds and the seed will perpetuate sustainability, perpetuate the life of a tree. So he caused it. And say, no man eats fruit from you hereafter. So God, I want you to understand that God is a business God. When he gives you something, he sowed the seed of his son, that seed of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, is, is what produced us, has produced millions of people. I want you to start thinking in that dimension. So this year is a business year. It's a business year. So the things you will hear, this, the ones you've heard, January, and the ones you hear this morning, will empower you to do mighty things, to do business with God this year, in Jesus' mighty name. Acts 6 3. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over what? They didn't call it ministry. This business. Run your life like a business. Run your life like a business. God does. I, I asked something some years ago. I said, if your life were a business, would you invest in it? In fact, there was a time I asked somebody is no longer here. I said, the way you're doing church thing, can you do that? Do you do that in your business? He said, no. But it didn't change. He's no longer here today. I sold him as a seed. <laughs> He's bringing food. food. <laughs> Does it make sense what we are saying? All right, let's take a confession and go into God's word. Can we declare boldly want to go? As I sit under the teaching of the word of God, I declare that my heart is a prepared ground to receive the living seed of the word of God. I am focused and do not permit any form of distraction or distortion. As the word comes forth, every need in my life is met. I receive revelation knowledge. I receive light for every dark area of my life. I received the impartation of the Spirit and grace of the Word to be a doer. I, I pull down and destroy every stronghold and heighten in my mind that will challenge or oppose the truth of the Word of God 
I hear. I receive and believe the word of God I hear today as the truth of God. This word bears fruit in my life a hundredfold as God confirms the word with miracles, wonders, and signs in my life. Amen. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you for clarity of mind. I thank you for anointed utterance to deliver the word that you have given me with accuracy that will bless your people and cause them to be empowered and enlightened to partner with you for greater works this year and for the rest of our lives. Spirit of the living God, as we have spoken with our mouth, do unto us. We thank you because this word returns with harvest of miracles, harvest of translations, transfigurations, and the Lord Jesus is glorified because at the end of the sermon will be conformed to his image. As I speak, only the Lord Jesus is head, only him is seen, and only him is glorified. In his mighty and matchless name, I have prayed and we have received. Amen. I'm teaching on what is titled Faith Goals. Faith Goals. Many of us set goals and we've known about uh, goals, but you see, if you're a believer, there's a way you have to live. You can't live like the world. God has called us out of darkness, out of the world, into his marvelous light. The Jews, when God delivered them from Egypt, he gave them a specific way to live. That's the law. The Ten Commandments and from there they got 618 other ordinances. So that formed the purpose of their life. That formed who they are. And they still practice it till today. And the Jews will teach you about making money. They control the financial world. Why? By virtue of what they've been taught. The whole of Western civilization, especially the legal system, was built on the first five books of the Bible. So if you are a lawyer, go and read the Bible, you will understand certain principles of law. So there's a way God wants us whom he has called. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that God has called out of us out of darkness into his marvelous light. There's a way God wants us to live and conduct all of our affairs. He wants us to live regulated lives by him. So when we talk of goals, the difference between setting goals as a believer between you and the person who doesn't know God is that your own goals should be called faith goals. Goals are fine, but you have to distinguish between your goals and that which, because, which God wants you to do. Because once you're born again, your whole life is regulated. Jesus, when we get born again, we said, um, Romans chapter 10 verse 10, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, oh, what? That Jesus is Lord. So that Lord means he has legal authority over your life. Supreme authority. You have become his own. Does it make sense? So you can live anyhow. You can live the way you want. And so when we come into every year, it's important that we set goals. God works based on this principle. He created the earth based on this principle and I will show us. Because if you don't have a goal, you won't have anything you're aiming at. Uh, oh, pastor, I am, I'm, I'm, go I'm going to make one billion this year. How? Without goals. And when we go to the book of Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens, New King James. God created the heavens and the earth. And then the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now, between Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and verse 2, is a long period of time. Bible scholars tell us that what happened there is found in Jeremiah chapter 4, from verse 23 to verse 25. Can I have that on the screen? Whoever is on the media, please, you need to be very fast because of time. We have a lot to cover. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 4 from verse 23 to verse 25. 
I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void. The same language used in Genesis chapter 2. Without form and I beheld it. It was without form and void. And the heavens, not one heavens, the heavens, they had no light. Now, look at the next verse, verse 24. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and the hills, all the hills moved lightly. Then the last 25, I beheld, Lord, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. So something happened between Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and verse 2. Something happened. We won't go into that. It's not within the context of what we are discussing. But after that thing happened, we now saw that the earth was without form and void. Because God cannot just create, and then there was, um, <laughs> earth will be formless and void empty he filled it before but something happened genesis uh, jeremiah 4 23 to 25 and then god came again on the scene and we saw genesis 1 verse 2 the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and then the spirit of the lord was hovering over the face of the earth verse 3 now says and god said let there be light so the first day he made only light one thing that was a goal God used six days to create the earth. Every day, notice every day, he did one specific thing. He had a goal for each day. That's goal setting. But it was based on what he saw, vision. Many people, and that's why many of us are not making progress. We have vision, but we can't break it down into goals. Goals are simply vision broken into practical steps. How do you eat an elephant? You cut it in size. Your mouth is too small to eat it. So you need to cut it in size. Is somebody with me? And that's what is a goal. Just like Nigeria play, played against Cameroon yesterday, right? How did we know we won the match? We scored two goals. Can you imagine that match without a goal post? We won't know who won. There will not be rules of the game. You can't even watch it. That's how many of us are living our lives without goals we love the bigger picture we want to win the match but there's no goal post to target our efforts towards so we, the big vision needs to be broken down into manageable and practical steps and that's the way god created the earth is somebody getting something but watch i want you to give you the principle darkness was on the face of the earth. So even if you don't have anybody to help you, your life is useless. That means formless. Even if your life is empty, void. That's how God started with. Even if you've labored and there's nothing to show for it. Even if you're new in any territory. If you apply this principle. If you understand it. If you apply it. You will have what God has. God is not a respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that walks righteousness. So he doesn't respect, he would the same thing he will give to you. Does it make sense? The reason he put it in the scriptures for us is that so that we can understand it and repeat it. And if this thing can work in your life, in your business, whatever it is, if you only understand it, believe it and do it. Amen. Amen. The difference, like I've said, between you and the world is that they set goals. That means they have what they want to achieve this year. Based on what they feel is right. You shouldn't do that. They have goals. You should have faith goals. And what makes your goals faith goals? Two things. Number one, the word of God. And number two, the Spirit of God. The Word of God and the Spirit of God. You, the Word that God has spoken to you concerning the year. If you, if you went through 21 days of prayer and fasting, it's impossible that if you genuinely did it, God would have laid some things in your heart. God would have set some things in your heart. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11, in the new king james version he has put eternity in their hearts not in our mind the heart 
So you can perceive that this is the way my life will go. You know, many people are making mistakes, putting the cat before the horse, because they do not listen to their heart, their spirit man. So when it's time to do masters, they think it's time to marry or to work. When it's time to marry, they think it's time to flex around. It has put eternity, not in our mind, in our heart. So you can know the next step you will take. God has put it there. We, we, it becomes clearer when we wait on him. We know the right thing to do. When we are starting this church, because God put it in the... I mean, everybody knows it, whether you are a believer or not. Let me give an example of Moses. Acts chapter 7, verse 23. The Bible says that when Moses turned 40 years, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. Verse 25 said, verse 24, he, he saw them fighting when he, he went to visit them and was, was rebuking them. Don't you know that your brothers? He saw an Egyptian beating an Israelite and he carried the Egyptian and killed him. And verse 25 said that, ah, because when he did that, the next day when he came, he saw two of them fighting, the two Israelites fighting. And he said, why are you people fighting? And they told me, do you want to kill? The one of them said, do you want to kill me like he killed the Egyptians? Then so verse 25 said, Acts 7.25, that the children of Israel, he was disappointed that they didn't receive him as a deliverance. He, he knew, it came to his heart, that he was, when he was 40. So you can't tell me, and God has, he has not had any personal encounter with God, just what he has been taught and the prudence of his heart. You know what you become. That's the reason for many frustration. We can see that big picture, but we are not becoming it. So we are frustrated. Some of us, out of that frustration, just goes to the next easy thing. You know, water finds the, the path of what? This resistance. And but unstable as water, you won't excel. So we are not excelling. We go to the path of easy re uh, least resistance. And then there's no excellence to our lives. Because that's the easier thing to do. Everybody's doing it. Let me do it. Then excellent. God removes his excellence. Is somebody getting something? All right. So we know what God wants us to do. We know the next thing. If, if, you, get, if you get what I'm saying, it will make a whole lot of difference in your life. You can align with the program of God with his visitation. Because God can't do anything in your life until you agree with him. That's why he kept on persuading Moses. Say, I'm going to send you. See all the time he spent with him. Exodus chapter 3 and chapter 4. Trying to persuade him. So that he can use him to align with him. And many of us, mighty things are not happening. Because we are not aligning with God. We, we, we can perceive that this is how our life should be. But we are not seeing it or we don't even know how to get it this teaching will arm you with that equip you enlighten you and empower you to do that in jesus name Amen. so the two things that make you make your faith uh, your goals faith goals the word of god and the spirit of god now watch the word of god the bible tells us in psalm 119 verse 130 the entrance of your word gives light Why do we need the light? So that we don't stumble. But it's not the word of God that gives light. It is the word of God that enters into you. That illuminates you. The entrance of his word gives light. And then brings understanding to the simple. That means I know the next thing to do. And I know what can come out from there when I do it. The entrance of the word brings light. The word of God does not. It is light in itself. In himself but it cannot bring light until he enters your heart where does he enter your heart so when it illuminates my heart i will know the next thing to do i will not stumble i will not be confused so the first thing god called for was light he left every other thing darkness formlessness but he asked for light first so that he can know the next thing to do and that's what we should do you can't just enter a year that's why we enter a year faster we enter once waiting on god before we go into any big project we enter why to get his light his illumination psalm 36 verse 9 says in your light we see light for with you is the fountain of life the fountain of life 
man in your light will now see the light to live that life. Does it make sense? So we don't just enter into things without consulting in his word. You will stumble. You will put the cart before the horse. You will struggle. You will be frustrated. We don't live like that. Are you with me? So we use God's light to search out and to plan. It's light. Remember, the light that enters our heart. The second thing is the holy, the second factor that makes your goal a faith goal is the Holy Spirit. If I go to the Holy Spirit, let me pause. Maybe when you get home, read it. Proverbs chapter 8 from verse 22 to verse excuse me. I think it's 30, 30 something. The last second to the last verse. Proverbs chapter 8 from verse 22. You know if you're in this church, you should, you should already know our, our covenant with Proverbs. <laughs> the book of Proverbs. Well, uh, let me just read verse 22, a few verses from that Proverbs chapter 8. Now, the Lord is talking of the word of God, which is wisdom. He says, the Lord, that is God himself, possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. So if your life doesn't have depth, go and consult the wisdom of God found in his word. Where there we are no fountains abounding with water. You don't have things bringing forth water in your life. It's the absence of a working knowledge of the word of God. Before the mountains we are settled, before the hills was I brought forth. Verse 26. While as yet he had not made the earth or the fields or the highest part of the dust of the world. Did you see that? Before he even started, even God needed to consult within himself. He said, it's been long God made the earth. He's still existing. Nothing can move him. Because he's, he got it. He consulted. Now, are you with me this morning? Verse 28. The next verse, please. When he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, please go ahead. When he gave the seas decree that the water should not pass his commandments, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him. So even God had to invest and consult with his word, with his wisdom to create. And you are not doing that, you are just praying. Many of us, you know, we are using prayer wrongly. We are using prayer to serve all needs. We are using prayer because we are mentally lazy. We don't want to apply ourselves. Then I was by him as one brought up with him. I was daily his delight. Not once you do once a month. What you do once a month or once a year. Rejoicing always before him. Rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth and my delight were with the sons of men. So the two, are you with me? The wisdom of God is in his word. God consulted that wisdom to do what he did. You need that. So when you do have it, you have light. So you can plan. Not plan in the light of what is happening. Plan in the light of the destiny God has for you. When you have that light, something will come to your heart. That this is the way I should go this year. Does it make sense? If you have not gotten it, go and keep fasting you know, every 21 days. I was listening to a man of God. He said he and his friend for one year they were fasting. They just finished youth service. Praying for direction. Praying for, for one year. At a point... An angel appeared to him and showed him his own. So he told his friend, I've received my answer. The answer is, don't go into ministry yet. 
to go and walk. You will get a walk. Then after some time, I will establish you in ministry. The friend also stopped <laughs> fasting and went, didn't hear anything, and went to do. 20 years after, they were totally different levels. May not be your portion. Though. I didn't hear a louder amen. Yeah. That you're succeeding now is not the guarantee that you're in God's will. Now, the next thing that makes your faith your goal, a faith goal, is the Holy Spirit. So, the darkness was upon the face of the deep. The earth was formless. You see, when light comes, darkness disappears. That's why we did the word of God. The word of God is light. The entrance of his word into our heart brings light. Now, we need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does a lot of things. Without him, there is no illumination. He's the one that enlightens us. Are you getting what I'm teaching? Are you following what I'm teaching? He's the one that enlightens us and empowers us. You know, you can have light. They can open the prison gate and light will come in, but you won't have the strength to come out of it. He's the one who brings the light and then gives us the power to walk through that gate. Out of every pit and every prison. Does it make sense? Yes, Amen. Amen. Now, there's a, two more things I want to say about the light because why we need the word. If you don't have God's light, you will, the things God has put in your heart. I don't, maybe I'm saying on this point because somebody needs to hear it. The things God has put in your heart, you will believe that there is no way it's going to happen. That is impossible. If you don't have the light of God, the word of God, illumination of that word and the Holy Spirit, you will not believe. Because whatever God asks you to do, may not look like it when he asks you to do it. I'll give you just one example from the Bible. Remember Noah? Remember Noah? You remember God told him to go and build the ark. In our day, it may not look very strange, but it was strange in his day. Two things made it strange then. Number one, it had never rained. Because the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 2 that before God will make the mist to come out from the earth to cool the earth. So it had not rained in his day. So when he was building ark, it looked stupid. The people don't have idea of sheep because it was God that gave him what to build and the dimension because he had never seen it. There was nothing to relate to that. That's why people were laughing at him. So if you don't have light and led by the Spirit, you'll be doing what God asks you to do. It will look foolish. But if you don't do it, the flood will come and carry you. See, so when Noah built the ark, he built it to the saving of his family. His generation he moved with godly fear why godly fear because he has never seen it let's go to hebrews 11 9. are you with me this morning number one he had, it has never been number two the whole earth has not been divided it was landlocked so he was not living by coastal town to build it nobody builds ship that is living in a landlocked area so that's why it's very strange Hebrews 11 9 by faith is it 9? No, not 9. Go to verse 12, please. I mean something there. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 7. Hebrews 11 7. By faith, Noah being warned of god of things not seen as yet did you see that nobody has seen it because what god may tell somebody now uh, this year he, god has put it in your heart this is the year to make billion because nobody in your family has made billion you don't know how to go about it so by faith you can move because the, the light has not entered into you somebody oh I'm, I'm not yet to be married and yet to have children god god will put it in your heart I said, this is what I'm going to do this year. You need to cooperate with him. 
Because if you don't complete with him, everything God says will not come to pass. Does it make sense? Am I in the right place this morning? By faith, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen yet, moved with fear, reverent fear, prepared an act to the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. So you need that. Let me give you another one why you need the light of God. If you don't have the light of God, you will go and be doing things that God does in nothing. Genesis chapter 11. We won't have time to read it from verse 1 to 9. They started building the Tower of Babel. But it was not God's will. So when God came, he scattered it. Some people are building their lives based on what they think is right. I mean, the people that were building the Tower of Babel, they said, let us make names for ourselves. But it's not God's will. God, he said, let us congregate together, build this tower to make a name for ourselves. God came and scattered it because whatever they were doing, they were against his will. So if you don't have God's light and his spirit, you can live this year in vanity and realize by December or at the end of your days that I've lived for nothing. Just like Noah, let God give you the dimension, tell you what to build and give you the dimensions of the ark. God gave Noah the pattern of the ark, gave him the dimensions. And he survived the storm. He survived the flood. Not one drop of water seeped in. Does it make sense what we are saying? Now, three principles, then I will close. That is the how to get this thing done. There are three principles God applied. And if you apply them, you'll get the same result. I'm just, this part one is just the general principles. In part two, I'll give us practical ways to do that. And because we're on Wednesday, how to now implement it in our lives. Now, these are the pr three principles of what God did, how he created. Remember, I said God applied these faith goals during the six days of creation. Read Genesis chapter 1, every day he just created only one thing. The first day, what did he create? Light. Let there be what? Light. Not sun, moon, and stars, oh, life. Let there be illumination from me to the earth. Because the sun, moon, and stars were created on the fourth day. So it's not what we are talking. Are you getting that now? Huh? Yes, sir. Am I in the right place this morning? Yes, is sir. Revelation, is it too much? We have not started anything. No. Better listen. But it's very practical, am I right? Yes, sir. All right. So the first day, um, God created one thing, did it for six days. And watch what happens. He did it sequentially. He knew the order they will come from. He didn't call for the uh, separation between waters the first day, light. You know what helped him get that so that he did everything step by step these three principles look at the three principles up that they were there number one there was a brooding of the holy spirit the first principle brooding what does it mean to brood you know we like big english but it's better you break it down and get understanding you know when the hen lays its eggs, right? It sits on it to hatch it. Am I right? But it's still not it. That's how that's what it means to brood. So when you hear the Holy Spirit was brooding on the face of the earth, the Holy Spirit was spreading its wings, spreading itself over the face of the earth to hatch something. What does it mean? Means that there must be a time of meditation in the word God's word to bring illumination. Many of us lose what we hear because we don't meditate. Hearing the word of God is like eating, eating food. You know that it's not every food you eat that digests. And it's only the ones that digest that gives your body nutrition. Hearing the word is eating food. Meditation is digesting what you have heard. So after service now, maybe you have an appointment, you just take off. You, know, you don't think about what you have heard or you go to visit somebody. 
Forget it. You didn't get anything. Some people is gist. Did you see what Pastor wore to die? Are you sure? That's my offering, no? That's my tithe. That's what you came here to do. It's not your own. Did you see what Pastor's wife wore? Did you see that sister or brother? God never created until the spirit brooded. When we now watch something, when we meditate on God's word, when we are meditating on it, the Holy Spirit comes over us. When the God of God you receive and meditate, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. The same thing he did to Mary. And what that, that happens, new things will start coming, possibilities will be dissolved. New things will start coming out, ideas. I hope I'm teaching this to the right bunch of people. That's how you do the impossible and greater works. You, the thing, not every word. Though. You sit under the word. You receive something. That's eating. You ate it. But it has not entered your system. It cannot nourish you. What do you do? You take that thing that you've heard and start brooding over it. Meditating. Thinking over it. Turning it over in your mind. It may look impossible. They told Mary, Virgin Mary, you're going to have the Messiah. Ah, I'm a virgin. That's never happened. There is no record. It's not medically possible. What kind of trouble is this? But as she received it, the angel told her, the Holy Spirit will what? Overshadow you. When you receive it and meditate, think over it again and again, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you and you will start becoming pregnant. That is, I'm telling you how to break out of wrong patterns, how to get delivered, how to do greater works, how to be armed for great things. And that's what God did. He never did anything until the Holy Spirit brooded. And as the Holy Spirit brooded, you know, watch Genesis. I don't have enough time. Watch Genesis chapter 1. Everything apart from light that God made, every other thing God made, he took inside from that chaos. When it was time he separated the waters. The next thing, he called forth land. There was land inside there. It was brooding that made him see that. You do the same principle, you will know what to do this year. What to do in January, what to do in February, what to do in March. Not just that a business came and a door opened. Does it make sense? So the first principle, the principle of brooding. You must be a man that broods, a woman who broods. God can't do anything in your life except you first brood. That's meditate. You must brood over what? Brood over what? The eggs. What you have received from the word being preached. Received from the word being read. You must set up our time for that. So many of us, we do confession. We pray. You know why it's not working? I'll teach more on this on Wednesday. Because there is no brooding. There is no meditation. It has not taken roots in your heart. There are no roots in your heart. When you meditate, the seed first takes root in your heart. You know, before you see anything on the earth, there is something already inside. Am I right? That's what meditation does. So, many of us are hurry. No. God, let this miracle happen. Let this... There is no root in the heart. It's not going to happen. You won't see God there. And you, you receive that anything God tells you impresses in your heart. The first thing you do is not to run after it. So take it, go and digest it, meditate upon it, let it set root in your heart. When God told me, it's time, to, I was in my last pastorate, it's time to have grants, just resign and go and pray. I prayed five months, so go and start hammer. I prayed for five months, meditated. In the morning, I can drop my wife. She was teaching there in the school. I come back home. Sometimes I pray. Sometimes it's meditation on what God has said. And it was taking root in my heart. When it was time to start, <laughs> and we are still on it. Praise God. Can we give Jesus a big clap offering? Amen. <laughs> so there must be brooding. That's the first principle. This is the governing principle for fasting. This brooding, waiting on God. So when people are fasting and they are running around, you know 
that God will not do anything. Because you are not focused. You can have a busy schedule, but you must set up a time to prove the governing principle. Why? So that things will enter into our hearts and have root in our hearts. While we wait on God at the beginning of the year and before embarking on any project, what this does when we brood is that we know God's will, it brings us into alignment with God's will, and then we are rooted in that God's will. Nothing can shake us, nothing can uproot us. And you know, faith, faith is absolute conviction. Faith is what? That's what faith is. Faith is, you see this bridge, I pass, I burn it. If you have an option, it won't work. Faith that is not absolute is paralytic. Even when we have not yet started, first I told my wife, go and resign. He said, this is the only source of income we are using. I said, I have so much faith in what God has called us to do. It can't fail. Is this principle law? It can't fail in my hands. She was earning more than me, even in my last pursuit. Well, she resigned, all right? Are you not better for it? Huh? Give Jesus a big clap of him. Amen. The second principle, because of her time, after God brooded, the next thing he did, many people stay in the brooding stage for too long. The next principle. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. The spirit of the Lord brooded upon the face of the waters. And this we see the second principle in verse 3. And God what? Said. The second principle is that of declaring. I don't want to say speaking. Declaring. Declaring what you believe. So you brood first before you declare. Words, uh, words are instruments of creation more than communication. There are other creatures, other animals, birds, but they don't speak. Man is the only creature that speaks. And it's not for communication because other creatures, other animals, other birds, they communicate non-verbally. But God gave man the privilege of speaking because man was made in his image and likeness. So speaking, declaring is actually an instrument of governance. Instrument of dominion. That's the primary reason. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, I think it's verse 5 or verse 3. Um, it says, where the word of a king is, there is what? Power. Where the word of a king is, there is what? Power. So he has to say something before, and then it will come to pass. So, wrote is something, before all the six days God walked, he started by speaking. Let there be light. There was light. Even the day, I think it was on the fourth day, when he now created with his hands. He formed with his hands. He first spoke it. What you don't speak, you can form. What you don't declare, you can form. You will first declare it. Remember, you're declaring after meditation, after it has grown root out of the abundance of the heart so the word you've received will be so abundant in your heart and then it will overflow through your mouth the ones that don't overflow through your mouth will never work you will just be doing religious exercise there's another interesting perspective in the speaking are you with me this morning Hebrews chapter 3. No, Hebrews chapter 3. I hope I got this right. Verse 16. No, not 16. Let's do Hebrews chapter because of time. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. Watch something there. We are for holy brethren, writing to people who are believers. I'm teaching us how to get our faith goals done. 
these are the general principles. First of all, I brood. It's brooding that will make me know what to do and how to do it and what is God's will and how to align with God. Am I right? Number two, I declare. Now, why do I declare? Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession. Profession. Many scriptures say confession and there is better in those scriptures. The high priest. Go to New King James. He, the Lord Jesus is the high priest of our what? Confession. Do you know that in the Old Testament, the high priest is so critical to everything they are doing. Now, we don't have the Old Testament. We are in the New Testament, New Covenant. And in that New Covenant, the Lord Jesus is our high priest. So, he's not offering just his blood before God. He's offering what we are saying before him. So, the offerings he makes to God is what you are declaring. The high priest of what I am saying. So, that's what he offers to God and says, this is what they are saying. He's the high priest of our confession. That's why, look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. I need to close. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Are you getting something from this? Yes, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. Did you see that? Because that's what he's offering. I stop speaking. I speak wrongly. I neutralize what he's doing in heaven. So I must be declaring what God has said, no matter how impossible it is. You know, Noah took, the Bible scholars tell us, 120 years to build the ark. And God was giving him an opportunity to declare what he believed to other people so that they can repent. They didn't. So he kept confessing it. As he was building it. I have so much to say. I think I'll close it. Let me just say two more things on this line. Hebrews 13 verse 15. Watch something there. Three things the Lord Jesus offer that in our confession. When we confess. Three things. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer what? The sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. The three things he offers, what we say, what we pray, and what he, we praise. What we say. That's why you can never catch me saying when you ask me, ah, Pastor, how are you? I can't say I'm fine. I will never say that. I will say I'm blessed and what? I live here. So he offers it to God. That's what he has said though. Can we send angels to do that to him? Because you shall have what you say. How is Nigeria? You know what you say. That's why your situation is like this. Because that's what he is offering for us. Amen. Amen. I'll teach more about this on Sunday. On Wednesday, about our confession. A house divided against itself, why faith confessions fail? I'll teach more about this. Isaiah 51, verse 16, and I'll close it. There's one more principle, but I will leave that for Wednesday. Isaiah 51, verse 16. I've put my words in your mouth. I have put my words in your mouth and I've covered you with the shadow of my hands. That's the Holy Spirit brooding over you. And this is the purpose that I may plant the heavens in your life. So that you can live your life as heaven on earth. You know, 
the first prayer request the Lord Jesus prayed in the our Father's prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy what? Kingdom come. Thy will be done where? On earth. That means in your life as it is in heaven. So he says, I've put my words in your mouth, then I've covered you with the shadow of my hand, the Holy Spirit. So when you start, after brooding, when you start speaking, I will start planting the heavens, the things I've set for you in the heavens, in your life. Did you get something from this? This looks too good to be true. That's why you have to listen to this message again. It's too big, too good to be true. But it is, because it's the gospel, the good news. That's what I preach. This year, you will see the wonders of God. Amen. You will do things that you never imagined possible. Amen. Brother Jeremiah, when he was here, we preached a message like this. And I prophesied like this. Because I said in that year, 2019, by the end of the year, you will find your place, yourself in places that has no connection to your background. Amen. And he said that as because he went on scholarship, NLNG scholarship, the least qualified person to get it. But he got it. 60,000 US dollars. He said as he walked down the streets of London that year, he remembered the words. Somebody, before this year comes to an end, this word preached today, as you have received it, today is a memorial. Amen. Because your life has taken a new meaning. Amen. The colors of God will be reflected on your destiny. Amen. Every form of staleness, the reign of stagnancy, barrenness, staleness, unfruitfulness, they come to an end today. Amen. You have been armed with superior information, Amen. with revelation knowledge. Amen. Now be imparted with the spirit of faith. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, by this teaching, God has given you a rod. He told Moses, with this rod you will do wonders with the rod of the revelation of what you have received throughout this year you will perform special miracles Amen. your life will be a mystery to your enemies Amen. you will divide red seas Amen. whatever whoever represents a pharaoh they will tremble at your presence Amen. You will be a terror to evil. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you. Amen. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can you lift up your hands and thank the Lord? Lift up your hands and thank him. Give him praise. Father, thank you for what I've heard today. Thank you. I receive it with all of my heart. I receive it with all of my heart. My life will never be the same. Remember, it's what you declare that God confirms. I will never be the same. I've changed levels. I've been translated. I operate from a different dimension this year. I operate from a higher realm. I operate with much spiritual intelligence. I operate with much spiritual understanding. My words are not ordinary. The word of God is taking root in my heart. The entrance of his word has brought light. I have received understanding. I know what to do. I'm sorry from glory to glory from faith to faith in the name of Jesus I'm giving you the next few seconds to declare what you believe open your mouth wide the Lord will feel it not one word of the Lord concerning me will fall to the ground this year this is my year of greater works I will do things that people never imagined I will do things that will confound my critics and my mockers because I have revelation knowledge because I've been armed with the revelation of what to do with spiritual understanding light has come darkness has disappeared ignorance has taken off in the name of Jesus I am empowered I am emboldened I am equipped I have the armor of God I have the favor of God for good understanding procures favor. I have good understanding. So I have the favor of God. I have favor from men and women. I have favor from strangers. In the name of Jesus. 
Makete leke podea. It is not the same me that came for this service that is going out. I will do greater works this year, starting from now. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and received. Amen. All eyes closed, please, all heads bow. You've heard me. The beginning of faith goes is giving your life to Jesus. Or if you have wandered away, coming back to Him. If you're that honest person, physically here, listening online, put your right hand on your heart. You will not waste your life this year. You will not waste your time. You will not live beyond and below God's privileges. Now, if you're that honest person, please all eyes close your heads, but put your right hand on your heart and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins. You were buried, and on the third day, God raised you from the dead, that I may be made right with you. Today, I confess you, Jesus Christ, as Lord. Receive into my heart as my Savior. Thank you for receiving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me pray for you if you pray that prayer. Father, as many who have said this prayer, you said as many that come to you, you will not cast away. Thank you for not casting them away. Thank you for giving them your life. For giving them your own life to flow through them. To enable them to be your children and to do greater works. For everyone who genuinely said this prayer. I thank you because from today their lives will no longer be ordinary. You take over every aspect of their lives. You invade every privacy they have. Transform them. Translate them. Let them go from glory to glory. As they have come here, it marks the end of shame in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Have you been blessed? Yes, Can we give Jesus a big clap offering? Give him a shout and a big clap offering. Amen. Amen. This week, do wonders. Amen. Do greater works. Amen. What people have told you that is impossible, from today, God has empowered you, equipped you, and anointed you to do them. Where nobody in your lineage has ever reached. From today, by what you have heard, they become your starting point. Amen. And you go from glory to glory. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can we celebrate Jesus one more time? Amen. This is for Pastor. Can we celebrate the Lord Jesus one more time? We won't have time because it's 9.30. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Lord make his face to shine upon you. Amen. Lift up his countenance upon you Amen. and give you his peace. This week, only glorious things Amen. are spoken and written concerning Amen. you. Go in peace. Return only with testimonies. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.